Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Michelle and I am the owner and maker behind k to Handmade. And this week I thought it would be interesting to talk about the differences between solid gold, gold filled, gold plated, and gold vermeil jewelry. Now, before we even get too far into this topic, let's talk about some reasons why people love gold so much. For starters, gold for the most part is hypoallergenic. So if you have sensitive skin, you're usually good to go, especially with the higher carrots of gold. Also, gold does not react to acid or moisture. So you can usually wear gold while you're cooking, while you're swimming, while you're showering, things like that. It's not going to tarnish or change color. Another reason why people love gold is because it retains its value really well. So if you have an old piece from your grandparents or an heirloom piece, you can always get it appraised and resell it. You're going to get a good amount of money back. For solid gold, you can be as high as 24 karat, meaning it is 100% pure gold. Now this is the most expensive and... I guess like most luxurious, but that being said, it's actually the least practical because 24 karat gold is super soft and malleable and will kind of nick and deform really easily. Like if you had a ring that was 24 karat gold, just by like banging it off a table sometimes will dent it. So that's not always ideal for everyday situations. So that being considered, people started adding alloys to gold to make it stronger presenting 22 karat gold. Uh, That is when the gold is 91.7% pure gold, and the other 8% is typically made up of different alloys like zinc, silver, nickel, etc. And like I said before, these alloys were added to make the gold stronger. Going down from there is 18 karat gold, which is 85% pure gold and 25% of different alloys. And going down from there is 14 karat gold, which is actually the gold that I work with the most. Uh, It is about 58.3% solid gold and 41.7% of it is the other alloys. Um, Out of all the golds, I think that this is the most affordable while still being considered like a nice solid gold. And it's also very durable considering the amount of alloy that is put into it. If you wanted to, you can go all the way down to like 10 karat, 8 karat gold, 10 karat being around 41.7% gold and 58.3% alloy. But just keep in mind that the lower in carats that you go like that, if you have sensitive skin, you might have a reaction just because there's a higher percentage of those other alloys in the metal. Now, when it comes to it, I would say that solid gold is definitely the top of the tier when talking about gold jewelry. It is definitely the ideal thing to invest in because it literally will last a lifetime. It will not change color. For the most part, if you get the ones that have the alloys mixed in, it's going to be pretty durable. But that being said, I know that everyone cannot afford that, me included. So real quick, entering the chat is gold filled and gold plated jewelry gold filled jewelry usually denoted on your stamped jewelry as gf sometimes Um, it's when a thick layer of gold is actually mechanically bonded to another metal usually a base metal like copper bronze brass etc the thickness of that gold that is mechanically bonded onto it Depends on the manufacturer, but it's typically a bit thicker than a gold-plated piece. Gold plating, which is another great alternative if you are trying to look on the more affordable side of gold. Uh, Gold plating is when a thin layer of gold is applied to the surface of your metal through an electroplating process, meaning Usually your piece is going to be dipped into a bath and then gold is going to be like electrically put onto the surface. 
the amount of gold that is put on there is usually pretty thin. Usually it's going to average about 0.05% of the actual weight of the piece. Gold plated pieces are usually denoted with a GP stamp or sometimes HGE stamp. The GP obviously stands for gold plated and the HGE stands for heavy gold electroplate. Now, gold plating is different than gold verme, which uh, for anyone that doesn't know, gold verme is actually a legal term that refers to a specific type of jewelry. Usually, the base metal in gold verme is going to be sterling silver or a fine silver. And then over that, it's going to have a thick plating of gold. And to be considered gold verme jewelry, it also has to be at least 2.5 microns thick. So unless you know that for sure, you really can't be marketing your jewelry as gold verme because it needs to be a certain amount of thickness. And when I say micron, no, I don't mean pens that you can draw with, but micron is actually a unit of measurement. One micron equals 0.001 of a millimeter. So keep that in mind. Sometimes for gold verme, you might see it denoted with the HGE, like I said before, for the plating, but also you need to be looking for the 0.925 stamp underneath the gold plating because remember, it has to be plating that is on top of sterling silver or fine silver. To help illustrate this idea a little bit, I made this little sketch showing the differences between the solid gold, gold filled, and gold plating. On the left side there, you see solid gold. You're not going to see any other metal in there. Gold filled, like I said, it's mechanically bonded. So you're going to see a large chunk in the middle that is going to be a base metal, but you're also going to see a thick layer on the outside that's solid gold, which is usually, like I said, at least 5% of the metal's weight. And then on the right side there, you can see the thinnest layer of gold, represented showing gold plating where the middle part is going to be primarily your base metal either bronze brass sometimes even silver though and the plating on top of it is going to be very thin usually only 0.05 percent of the piece being gold when it comes to what is the best option and what you should be buying it really depends on what your budget is and what your intention for the piece is If you intend to wear something every single day, not take it off, literally wear it until you die, I would suggest investing in a solid gold piece. Things that you're just going to wear here and there, you're not going to be wearing them when you're like washing dishes or doing yard work. I would say maybe go with a gold filled or a gold plated piece. That's probably fine. Keep in mind, gold plated and gold filled pieces will eventually wear. If you are on a budget and you want to get that gold look, I think gold plating is a great option. You can always get your piece replated if the gold should start to come off, which I don't think is a huge deal. It's usually not more than 10 to $20 if you ask me to replate your piece. I hope I answered a lot of your questions and if I was confusing about anything, please let me know and I will try to clarify. But thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you all next week.